Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Double honor to the apostles and elders, great millstone, peace and citations to the hopeful elect. Is there, do you know why then uh, Rockefeller, the Ford Foundation, and Linda and Bill Gates fun, uh, Foundation, I don't know, uh, are uh, paying for the Stalwald vault in Norway to keep all the seeds that are not GMO? What is your okay. stake on it? The question was about why the Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation, Syngenta, which is one of the largest GMO corporations, a British Swiss company, uh, why they financed the creation of a nuclear proof seed vault to store all the seed varieties of the entire planet up near the Arctic Circle, inaccessible by Greenpeace boats or almost anything. Uh, what, what's going on with that? What, what interest do they have? I, well, the BBC, when they did a story on it years ago, called it the Doomsday Seed Vault. I don't know. I can't answer that, but it sure is a scary thing to me. Are they planning to do something to the seed varieties of the entire planet and then be the ones who control what comes out and in what form it's genetically manipulated or not? I don't know, but it, it certainly is a very scary thing. Uh, one of the first things to happen when the U.S. bombed Saddam Hussein's Iraq back to the Stone Age in 2003, there was, Iraq is the cradle of civilized agriculture, the Tigris-Euphrates Valley, Mesopotamia, and there was a seed bank of wheat varieties in a place in Iraq called Abu Ghraib. We've heard about it all through the prison. Well, during the course of the U.S. bombing of Iraq, that seed bank in Abu Ghraib disappeared. Nobody could say where it went. The farmers had to depend on the U.S. AID to get seeds to plant wheat for the next harvest after the war. And nobody has been able to verify this yet. I, I uh, talked with an Iraqi woman living in the U.S., but she, she was trying to verify this, that these would be GMO wheat varieties. Perhaps you know uh, if that uh, has been introduced into Iraq by deception. But the seed vault in, in Svalbard is, is uh, it's, it's 1984. It's really scary. I don't know. There you have it. You heard it from E himself. Of E having a nuclear proof doomsday, or they call it the doomsday seed vote. But E has a nuclear proof seed vote, okay? When they gather all the seeds around the world, the actual real seeds, they gather them all together and they keep them for themselves. Okay, now there's a few reasons, you know, that we know E is doing this. One, the seeds that he gives the people today are not the actual uh, real seeds. He gives them the GMO seeds because he wants everyone to keep coming back to him. Okay. To buy the seeds, he does. He doesn't want people to continue to flourish and and do and grow things on their own. He doesn't want people to be able to continue, continue to sustain themselves because he's he wants to control every aspect of the life of the people. And I'm speaking about the elites. That's what I'm talking about. When we say e Esau, I'm talking about the elites of Esau. Okay. This is what he wants to do. Uh, furthermore, you know, it's it's nuclear proof because he knows there's going to be a World War Three, and in and in his mind, he he thinks he's going to outsmart, he's going to outbeat the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, the Heavenly Father, in the name of His only begotten Son, that's what we say. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But he thinks he's going to outsmart the Heavenly Father. Okay. Because this is the proudness of Esau, this is, or this is the pride 
of Esau E. So let's get this, let's get a, start with this first. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 11, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. So, um, E actually believes in his mind that he's going to really continue to rule the earth forever, even after the nuclear destruction. Just why when you see the different movies, the different series that you may find on Netflix and Hulu and so forth of, of him, you know, after the nuclear destruction, 100, 200 years later. Right. After they come out the bunkers or after they come from out of space. Because they believe that their houses shall continue forever. And they believe of having these different things stored that they're going to be capable to do so. Even when you look at a uh, uh, different doomsday bunkers, you'll see you got ordinary, ordinary doomsday bunkers that people may be able, that may be able to sustain life for 10 plus years. Then you got luxury doomsday bunkers where people that can hold up to 75, 100 people and so forth that can sustain people for 30, 40, 50 plus years. Right. Having enough food, having enough water. Having seeds in, in different, uh, far, like real life farms down there, plant farms, all right, animal farms. Just type it in, look it up, look up these different doomsday bunkers that E is creating. And we ain't talking about the low level Edomites, because when you even look at the low level Edomites, they be having a, a quite some stuff too. But the elites, there's, there's a blow your mind. But their point is what the point is that they believe that their houses shall continue forever. All right. And they know these things are coming. They know it's going to be chaos all throughout the earth because they're the ones that's creating it. They know that there's going to be World War Three. But, you know, and even though they are creating the chaos that's about to happen in, in a, on the planet Earth, everything is orchestrated. <laughs> By the heavenly father. All right. The king's mind. Uh, uh, mind of the king. Let's see. Because when you think back on it, the Lord is instructing these different kings, instructing the mind of these different kings to do what they're doing. All right. They're not doing this thing on their own. They may think they are, but it's the Lord that's doing so. Um, oh, I can't think of it. All right, but I, I pretty much uh, quoted it. Um, but yeah, you know, the Lord basically, roughly paraphrasing, he instructed the mind of the king and the mind of these different kings. And they do the Heavenly Father's will. Right? So this different war that's going to jump off, he puts it on the king's minds. Chaos and, and, and hell and destruction that's about to come upon earth. He, he puts it in the minds of the elites to do these different things. Because all this, all this must be. As the same how he hardened the Pharaoh's heart, the same as he's you know working on the minds of these different kings. Okay? These different rulers of the nations. Now, um, let's go to the book of Amos, chapter 9. This is what the Lord says about them trying to hide in these different places. You know, them say bonkers. Um, them trying to hide up in the, uh, the, the heavens and they all in their uh, different spacecrafts. Right? The book of Amos 9, verse 2, though they dig into hell, which goes into the ground. The grave, which is the ground, the earth. Then shall my hand, my, my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence I will bring them down. You see that? So they're going to try to hide. But the Lord is going, look, there, there is no escape route for you to eat. So though you're going to try to hide yourself, the Lord is still going to have the men of the Lord when they give, give them the spiritual powers, 
come get you. Right? And though they hide themselves in the top of Cormel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. Who is the serpent speaking of? This is speaking of the great sea serpent, the heavenly father's pet known as Leviathan. All right? Which they call it the sea monster. So either way, E, you out of there. You, everything that you're doing, it's all in vain. But through pride, you're going to continue to do it because you believe that you can outsmart, that you can outthink, that you can outplay Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. And your judgment is already set. We just waiting for it to play out. All right. You think you can offset judgment by creating these nuclear proof facilities. That you can hide and all the, that you can put your money your, in advanced technology to, to be able to hide from the hand of the Lord. But you're not going to be able to do so. OK, so not only are they creating these different nuclear facilities, you know, uh, for us to try to escape the destruction. All right. And, and these, these different facilities, these, they're not for everyone. It's only for select few. The elites got their select few and the Edomites and uh, people that come together and build their dooms, their little bunkers. Right? It's only for their select people. But all these people that believe that they're going to get to those areas in time, they're not going to even get to those areas. They're going to be trapped in the different cities they're at as far as the martial law is underway and different chaos and riots and stuff break out. So a lot of these people are not even going to get to these places which they took their time and built and, and funded into all right so uh so yeah so he was talking about uh you know how he destroys people's uh basically farms that has that has natural seeds and he supplies them back with uh, the gmo seeds you know bullshit because that that's that's e you know and that's him trying to ultimately control the whole narrative of him having the real and giving you the fake because he doesn't want you to replant the seeds. He wants you to be able to use it one time and go back to him for it. But naturally, the seed, okay, the seeds that comes out of these different uh, vegetables and um, fruits, these are these they're a, they're created to be able to be replanted, and Esau doesn't want to allow that. All right, he gives you the GMO bullshit, you know, so you can you can plant and crop BS, which doesn't give you the the all natural nourishment that your body needs. He knows all this, you know. And when you look at it, th this is also an act of biological warfare. This, that's an act of biological warfare when you're tampering with the water, when you're tampering with the food and it can destroy you. Yes, that, that's an act of biological warfare. All right. Um, so what I wanted to touch on. Um, so now, you know how we go into the, the scriptures, how. We go to the E for the one of all things, right? Which is a, a curse to happen to us. We just read it real quick. The book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in a want of all things. And he wants to continue that platform. Okay? He wants to continue that platform. But on the bigger scale of what he's creating now, of what you see with this whole call, a uh, whole so-called pandemic, of him knocking out the middle class, of him knocking out, you know, these different uh, mom and pop stores, these little low, these little low, uh, let's say like low-level uh, existing uh, shops, like you know, uh, little corner stores, all right, little small-time bakeries, things like that, little uh, uh, restaurants, right. What he's doing is he's 
at the same time of this pandemic of pu- pandemic of pushing out that fear and, and creating his agenda to ultimately lead to the the market to be system, right? He's wiping out these di- these different these different uh these different people on the low end so he can have the ultimate control and do the things by his way in the big box stores only this is what he this is how he's going to start doing things or this is his plan to uh, of the future of how, of how he want how he wants to control the whole entire market okay by his way that's why we say there's only going to be like Costco's and Walmart's and um, BJ's, these, these big uh, box supply chain stores. That's going to be it. And these low, these low level local, uh, you know, people, uh, Habu corner stores and Hajib corner stores and, you know, 7 Eleven. He's about to knock all of them out the way. So he can have full control. Over the market. Now, I'm not saying that he doesn't have the control of the market, which he does, but he wants to make it as simple as possible. Okay, as simple as possible, you know. And when you control the food supply, when you you know when you're the source of all these different things, because when you look at all these different plants, the water plants, the uh, the uh, you know the food plants. You know, whatever plant you could think of, all those sources still go back to eat. All of them. Every single one of them. You know? Um, so uh I believe what I forget what else he was saying. You know, but uh yeah, you know, an uh, interesting uh, inter- interesting, you know, uh interview, you know, m- that was public by the way, uh of that was being said, you know, but cause this is what E wants. Right. This is what he wants. Right. To be able to control the whole platform on all levels. So, I mean, you know, I know I didn't uh, I rambled on a little bit and didn't hit much scriptures. But uh, the point is there, you know, he wants to have that ultimate control, you know, and he believes he's going to escape World War Three. He believes he's going to his houses are going to continue forever, you know, but by by building these different these these different uh doomsday bunkers all right and uh you know with this the c one is for him to control you know more of the uh a lot of the food market in that case so uh you know or will I hope this quick lesson was edifying as I touched on it to a spirit until next time I want to say shalom.